periocular tumors, whether they are presenting late or, or, or it's recurrent or extensive, represent a treatment challenge, as you know. The conventional treatment for uh, uh, these large tumors has been always wide excision or excentration. Now, there's been lots of um, changes in treatment protocols with radiation and new drugs that help to shrink these tumors that limit the needs for extensive or mutilating surgeries as we used to do um, 20, 30 years ago. So I'm going to go about the um, current radiation treatments that we use for periocular tumors as well as the new drugs or the drugs that we use to treat uh, periocular tumors. So in radiotherapy, we have what's called ortho-voltage X-ray radiotherapy. That's common to the uh, dermatologists. They, they know about it. It's an old machine. The megavoltage that we talked about in treating the melanoma, the one that rotates around the eye, we use it, the special indications for it for periocular tumors. Electron beam radiotherapy and plaque radiotherapy actually can be used for ocular surface tumors. Starting with ortho-voltage X-ray, this is an, a form of external beam where you put this tube to cover the area that you want to treat. It uses a low-energy X-ray. It's not like the megavoltage, it's low, so they call it ortho-voltage, similar to what we use in X-rays, not very high. And the energy is in the kilovolt range, 100 to 250, depends on the tumor depth. It can cover tumor depth up to one centimeter. In other words, it can take any tumor cells within the full thickness of the eyelid down to the palpebral conjunctiva. The tissues around can be isolated by putting lead plates and the globe itself it can be shielded by a gold plate. So it can treat basal cell carcinoma, the most common eyelid tumors. And the thing is, what happened is that because of the rich blood supply of the optic nerve, you don't need reconstruction. It's what happened is that this area becomes inflamed after you kill it with radiation, become necrotic tissue, it starts to disintegrate and shed off gradually two weeks after. And the tissue replacement happens gradually as well. So you get complete healing without the need for reconstruction, it's just the radiation. Uh, can be applied in, in rodent ulcer. Uh, the morphea form, which is difficult to treat because of hard to treat, you need to get very wide excision uh, for nodular BCCs. We had a very good paper published in the British Journal of Ophthalmology about 10 years ago, where we looked at our track record of the patients treated with uh, ortho-voltage radiotherapy at the medial canthus, which is a challenging area because it's near to the lacrimal apparatus and um, it tends to go deep. We achieved tumor control rate, average of 94% for all cases. Uh, if it was used as a primary treatment, and 95%. If it uses an adjuvant treatment after excision with some residual tumor left, 100%. And for recurrent cases, up to 91%. It's an excellent treatment, and these, these rates uh, are comparable with those of um, excision with tumor margin control. And we looked at the side effects of the radiation. Most of them are minor and manageable. And some of them are actually related to the place of that, uh, the medial canthus location. So you can get lacrimal obstruction, dry eye, which will happen with surgery anyway. But it's an excellent tool at hand to treat um, um, many difficult um, uh, eyelid tumors. For squamous cell carcinoma, which you tend to have wider excision because it tends to have more extension in the tissue than basal cell and it can have very neural invasion. So instead of doing a large excision here and get a glabellar flap and stardy flap and all these, with application of um, ortho-voltage radiotherapy, again, you achieve tumor necrosis uh, and spontaneous um, regeneration and get control uh, in, in such difficult uh, tumors. Even for diffuse melanoma, which is uh, very difficult. So here I, here I have an example of this lady. She was 71 years old, uh, biopsy-proven lentigo malignant melanoma. 
the, the standard of care for this is exenteration because it's um, widespread. And this patient came to us after multiple recurrences, after previous surgical excisions elsewhere. And the latest recurrence was widespread, as you can see, involving the conjunctiva, bulbar and palpebral, and skin and the lateral cantus and extending everywhere. Because of the bulbar component, as I said, the orthovoltage will, will encompass the eyelid only without the bulbar conjunctiva. So we started her on mitomycin C to clear the cells from the bulbar conjunctiva. And then we went and applied the orthovoltage radiotherapy. We added a cryotherapy to one spot at the lead margin, and that achieved complete control of, of the mel melanoma. And there's been no recurrence for four years after that. So again, avoided exenteration in such a difficult case. Also, also for sebaceous carcinoma, as you know, sebaceous is an aggressive tumor. Uh, in such cases, the treatment usually would be wide excision, but here in such case, only shave biopsy of the lump, then you add the radiation to the entire eyelid, and you could, could achieve no recurrence for five years after radiotherapy. Now, the second form of radiation is the same one that we spoke about in melanoma, the megavoltage um, photon radiotherapy. So that you can shoot at periocular tumors, not directly on the eye surface, like if you have something in the corner, uh, eyelid and anterior orbit, you can use it. For tumors more than one centimeter that you cannot treat with orthovoltage. Um, we can use it as a primary treatment. So here is a case of invasive basal cell carcinoma, again, treated with uh, mega voltage uh, photon radiotherapy. Tumor, necro tumor necrosis was achieved, followed by gradual regeneration six months later. You see excellent results. Uh, with no need for reconstruction. For melanomas, also not on directly on the ocular surface, you can use this as an adjuvant treatment after excision of the main mass. I have an example here of a lady came to us with larger recurrent ocular surface and anterior orbital squamous cell carcinoma. As you can see, the tumor is extending all the way down to the limbus and goes through the medial canthus down to them, perhaps to the mid orbit. So because we cannot shoot, as I say, directly on the ocular surface, we could manage to remove the uh, bulbar part, but the, the deeper part we added, um, we did excision cryotherapy for the bulbar part, then the, we added external beam therapy to the anterior orbit part. We used here uh, 30 gray in 15 sessions and we could achieve uh, complete control with no recurrence for three years after treatment. If you don't have an eye and you have a thick eyelid tumor, like if you have a squamous cell carcinoma of the eyelid and anterior orbit, um, it, it would be safe to shoot directly at the lesion. Um, if you have a squamous cell carcinoma, you can shoot directly at the lesion with the mega voltage photon and achieve tumor control. This is another interesting situation that we used um, external beam radiotherapy in. So this patient was referred to us with a large extensive melanoma involving the bulbar conjunctiva and nodule extending down to the anterior orbit and was involving the insertion of the lateral and inferior rectus muscle. For such an extensive involvement, the treatment would be exenteration, obviously, but the patient did not want to go through exenteration. So we thought maybe if we can do extended inoculation, like remove the eye with the lump on the surface, then add external beam for the residual, any residual uh, cells in the orbit, we could achieve a better cosmetic outcome. So this is the excision of the mass uh, with the eye. And I could manage to put um, an implant with the shreds of remaining conjunctiva and, and, and tenon, I could bury it in. Obviously, it ended up with contracted socket. However, we applied radiation uh, treatment and did socket reconstruction six weeks later, and we could achieve good cosmetic outcome functioning eyelid um, over inoculated eye rather than excentration. 
Electron beam radiotherapy, the same machine that produces the photon can have a cone attachment to release electrons instead of photons. The photons is uh, of lower energy and because they are subatomic particles, they are, they are charged particles, they can behave similar to the proton beam, but they are much lighter. So you need a tumor that needs low energy and superficial. The tumor that's most suitable for electron beam is lymphoma. When you have a lymphoma involving the conjunctiva and anterior orbit, uh, electron beam would be an ideal treatment here because it requires very low energy, 20 to 25 gray over 10 fractions. Some sporadic reports from India and reports from the States talk about its effectiveness in uh, ocular surface neoplasia, squamous cell carcinoma. But in these cases, the tumor was really large and all it achieved is that to shrink the tumor and it did not abolish it completely. And we published recently our experience with using electron beam and mega voltage photon beam uh, to treat uh, lymphomas in different locations. Uh, superficial, we will use the electron. If they are deeper in the orbit, we will use the mega voltage photon radiotherapy. Now, plug radiotherapy has a role also in ocular surface tumors. So if you have a tumor that's stuck to the sclera, you know that if you shave it off, you leave still some cells behind you. You can do excision followed by application of plug to treat uh, to the tumor depth in the sclera, uh, and that can achieve uh, good control. For example, cases of recurrent melanoma at the limbus is stuck to the sclera. No matter how you try to treat it, uh, it will come back. Um, radiation treatment here will give you an extra advantage of treating cells embedded in the sclera. This is an example, a patient presented to us with a large limbal mass with a scleral component that you can see. So we went about it by excision biopsy, then episcleral plug radiotherapy for the residual mass. The mass came back to be a melanoma, so we decided to use 85 gray to a depth of 3 millimeter to treat the remaining component in the, in the sclera. And that was the results of six months, completely gone, and we could achieve uh, globe preservation. If we know the treatment, the diagnosis up front, we can do the whole thing in one session. So here is a patient of recurrent ocular surface melanoma with a scleral invasion. They had excision elsewhere two times and she's coming back with a brown mass in the same area. So we know it's a melanoma. So we go define the tumor extent do surgical excision, apply cryotherapy at the conjunctival edges, and put the plug dosed to a melanoma, and you can get tumor control with no recurrence. This is a more complex case, a patient presented with extensive ocular surface melanoma involving the upper and lower conjunctival fornices as you can see, and the melanoma was virtually everywhere, palpebral and bulbar conjunctiva. So again, treatment here would be upfront excentration. But what we did is that we went stepwise treatment. First, we excised the, surg the, bul the bulky component at the fornices. And that's how the eye looked, like just scattered melanoma cells everywhere. And then we decided to use an unshielded plug, like a plug without a gold shield, so it hits both ways. So to achieve that, we started by doing 360 periotomy and did a Gunderson flap. So now the we sutured the conjunctiva together. So now we have the conjunctiva as a one continuous set. We take pre-placed sutures at the medial and lateral cancel tendons and we take pre-placed tarsorophy sutures. We put the unshielded plug, so it hits on the bulbar conjunctiva, on the Gunderson flap that we created, and it will hit on the back surface of the eyelids as well. And we do the tarsorophy, and we could see in eight weeks complete disappearance of all the pigmented cells. 
The cornea suffered a little bit from ischemia, but the patient recovered uh, clarity after uh, further few months. Now, the drugs that we use for periocular uh, cancers or periocular tumors uh, are variable. We have chemotherapy, the standard cytotoxic drugs. We have targeted therapy that interfere with cell-to-cell -cell signaling. And the immunotherapy where the cells combined, uh, where the agent combines the cytotoxic T cells to the tumor cells. We can be applied, we can be administered systemically or direct infiltration into the tumor or as topical treatment. So here we have a myriad of options. The, for the systemic, we have the hedgehog pathway inhibitors, what's known as Vismodigib, uh, commercially known as Erivage. It's changed the scene of advanced basal cell carcinomas, those ones that invade the orbit or extensive areas or multifocal or metastatic. Uh, those that are not suitable to be treated by surgery or by radiation, we can start them by uh, Vismodigib. Anti-PD-1 semiplimab works on squamous cell carcinoma, BRF inhibitors for metastatic skin or conjunctival melanoma, Rituximab for lymphoma, mTOR inhibitors for lymphangioma, propranolol for capillary hemangioma of the, of, of the pediatric age. You know the topical ones. And injections, we inject intralesionally or perilesionally some drugs like interferon, biliomycin, methotrexate, according to the uh, tumor type. So I'm going to go about some examples here. So oral vismodigib for basal cell carcinoma, as I say, it targets the hedgehog signaling pathway, uh, and it's used as a new adjuvant oral treatment. It shrinks tumor, and sometimes you need to, to use an extra adjuvant treatment by, by um, surgery or radiation for any residue. Uh, excellent drug, but it has side effects like GIT disorders, muscle spam, and hair loss. You need to give it on monthly doses, and some patients do not stand it for, for a long time. So here is an example of patients of multiple recurrent basal cell carcinoma excised elsewhere that has eroded the lead margin all the way down to uh, the orbital rim. And after five months of this modigib, the tumor is almost completely gone. And we keep the patient under observation for any minor recurrence that we can handle easily with surgery or radiation. Uh, another case. Um, recurrent extensive sclerosing basal cell carcinoma of the eyelid and orbit. You see somebody here nicely put uh, a graft, but the tumor is, keeps coming back and extending deep to the orbit. So we did uh, Vismodigib, which after four months reduced the tumor burden big time, and we left with a small uh, nodule there that we applied orthovoltage radiotherapy, and it managed to control the tumor, and there's been no recurrence for two years after that. You can inject biliomycin for some extensive BCC intralesionally. Uh, so biliomycin, as you know, uh, old cheap drug. This case was an elderly lady. She cannot be put under general anesthesia to do extensive surgical excision and, re and, and reconstruction. Uh, her age, she cannot stand the side effects of this modigib that we just spoke about. And we cannot use orthovoltage radiotherapy because we cannot isolate the eye. There is no eyelid that we can put a gold shield so the eyelid is isolated, is isolated for the radiotherapy. So we decided to go about it with injecting biliomycin intralesionally. And as you see, after five injections, most of the tumor uh, was gone. And uh, she's still under uh, current treatment for further injections if needed. For the diffuse sebaceous cell carcinoma, the uh, blepharitis-like type, which comes with uh, um, eyelid and conjunctival involvement, using a combination topical chemotherapy might be more effective than a single treatment because you hit the cell cycle in two locations. So in that case, we used uh, topical mitomycin C and 5-FU alternatingly, continuously, and both of them at 50% uh, uh, their original dose. So that reduced the toxicity of both drugs, but gives synergism 
to control the disease uh, over an extended period of time. Now, we started to know about that there are some gene, uh, some mutations in conjunctival and skin melanoma that we can target with some drugs. So BRF mutation is present in 40% of conjunctival melanoma and present in 32% of, of metastasis, metastatic melanoma. <clears throat> we do, uh, once we find the BRF mutation, specific type of BRF mutation called V600E, we know that this, if it's present, the tumor would respond to new drugs, vimurafenib and dabrafenib. And in case of metastasis happen to the local lymph nodes, we have uh, a weapon at hand to treat uh, metastatic tumors. I remember in one of the meetings, somebody mentioned that a patient presented already with metastasis at the time of presentation of uh, conjunctival melanoma. And as they give the treatment for metastasis, the ocular melanoma started to shrink and, and disappear. So that opens the door to use these drugs uh, as a local treatment for diffuse conjunctival melanoma in the future. Now, the role of immunotherapy. So here is an example. A patient presented to us with a large, slowly growing epibulbar tumor. The eye, we couldn't open and see what's underneath. As you see, large mass. So we went through the eyelid and took a biopsy from the mass that showed that the mass is actually a moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. So we decided to go about um, the squamous cell carcinoma to treat with uh, the anti-PD-1 semiplimab. This is a new drug used for uh, skin squamous cell carcinoma, and it showed excellent results for periocular ones as well. And the tumor has significantly shrunken that it become easily to open the eyelid and remove the mass. Here's another example, a 27-year-old uh, lady with trisomy 21. She's been on chronic voriconazole antifungal treatment for fungal meningitis that she had, and that predisposes to development of squamous cell carcinoma. So she came to us after previous five surgical excision, and at the end, the surgeon gave her his back and said, there's nothing much I can do. You need to go through a big surgery. And the last recurrence was very progressive, or fast progressive over the course of four months. So she came to us, as you can see, like horrendous tumor. Uh, if you can see the MRI, it's more than the size of an eye involving the anterior orbit and the surface of the eye. So we started her on semiplimab drug every three weeks, given intravenously for seven cycles. So this is how she was in day one. After one month, significant reduction. After three months, after five, five months of treatment, the tumor was completely gone. And she remained no recurrence so far up to 14 months just by the effect of the drug, nothing else. My last example today is this lady, 84-year-old female, referred to us with biopsy-proven keratoacanthoma. She was treated by her dermatologist. Previous treatment were electrodissection and keratage, cryotherapy. They gave her antibiotic because it became infected and um, has shown a progressive course over three months. So again, the decision here would be like wide excision and big reconstructions. We did an MRI. We, we find that the um, keratoacanthoma is not invading the bones underneath. You could Feel, you could see and feel the bones uh, of the skull at, at, the, uh, at the bottom of the lesion. So we started her on weekly intralesional lithotrexate, 25 milligram per milliliter for five weeks. And obviously before we start those injections, we give perilesional xylocaine and, and we do the brightment for any dead tissue. And this is how it went. This is how she showed in day one, after two weeks of injections at a weekly interval, after four weeks, after six weeks. Complete healing without the need for anything other than the perilesional injections. And she achieved no recurrence after 20 months.
So I want to conclude my talks today by the word of Ms. van der Rohe. He's a German-American architect. He's famous for his word, less is more. The multidisciplinary management, which will include the radiation and chemotherapy and drugs in addition to surgery, and selected advanced periocular cutaneous uh, periocular cancers, provides complete tumor control with the less need for extensive or mutilating surgery and more presentation, more preservation of the ophthalmic structure and functions. And this is where this specialty is heading. We keep discovering new drugs, we keep refining our radiation protocols, so we move away from more big surgeries and preserve more uh, structures and functions. Thank you very much. شكرا دكتور حاتم والله very informative presentation على ال ocular surface tumors واحنا عندنا دلوقتي يعني 5 to 10 minutes عشان نقول ونقول احنا كنا ناويين المرة الجاية لما تيجي إن شاء الله هنعمل برضه توك تاني بإذن الله في الصيف أي أسئلة بقى بالذات للناس بتوع ال ocular surface دكتور ايهاب عنده سؤال؟ اه انا بس احب ارحب بالدكتور حاتم زميل قديم وعشره يعني واحب انا يعني سوء توقيت بس ما جتش بدري يعني احنا وي دو هاف يعني فيري نايس برزنتيشنز اللي في حاجات كتير من اللي قلتها افيلابل وفي حاجات كتير قوي مش افيلابل بالذات بالنسبه للراديو ثيرابي وتعاوننا مع قسم الاشعه والتوبيكال والسيستميك ايمينو موديريشن اللي هي واخدة بيج فوج يعني البي راف وميني ريسبتورز بنقدر نعملها دلوقتي في مصر عشان نتاكد بالذات الميلانومز والحقيقه انا كان عندي اكسبيرينس ببليومايسن بليومايسن از فيري افيشنت مش بس في سكريم السن كمان في الميلانومز فانا احب اعرف برضو لو امونج حاجات كتير اللي معاكوا عندك اكسبيرينس مع بليومايسن ولا لا بس ما كناوش في الميلانوما بس عملناها في البيسنت سيل كارسينوما وطبعا الانجيوما هو ده <تصفيق> الحاجه الثانيه في الليمف نود بايوبسي في الاكستنسيف ليجنز اللي هي اوبفيسلي برضو ممكن يبقى معاها كسنتينال نود بايوبسي او اكستنشن تظهر بعد كده ايه برضو خبرتك مع الاكستنسيف اجريسيف ليجنز بالمنظر ده؟ سو كل كل العيانين الكونجنكتيفال او اي ليد ميلانوما بيكوز لايك هود اوف ميتاستس تو ذا ليمف نودز بيبقوا تحت الكير بتاع الهيد اند نيك سيرجنز لايك ذس از اوت سايد مي سند تو ذا هيد اند نيك سيرجنز They believe in frequent MRIs rather than sentinel node biopsy. Sent sentinel node is to tell you where the tumor will head, to which lymph node. We know that this area either will drain here or here, right? So doing sentinel node biopsy to tell us where the tumor will go, it doesn't tell us that the tumor has gone to this lymph node. It just tells us it's likely to go to this lymph node. So really, the application of that is not adding much as doing PET scans or MRIs. Uh, uh, periodically to check any anything unusual. In that case, we go ahead and take a biopsy. The systemic moderation help the affect the rate or the invasion of the nodes. Now, sir, I noticed the difference in survival or the systemic metastasis. Well, um, يعني, well, it does not affect. Well, it depends on the type of mutation. So if they have the BRF, you have a drug that will improve the survival. If it doesn't, if it has the NRAS or KRAS, the, the bad mutations. Then it's not going to make a difference. هي نشكر الدكتور حاتم على يعني تشريفه لينا هو يعني مش هقول هو بيته يعني القصر العيني ونورنا واحنا في حقيقه استفدنا من البرزنتيشنز اللي قلتها لنا وهنكمل تواصل مع بعض ونشكركم جميعا شكرا جزيلا.